Hey guys, welcome back to Chaos Core Tech. My name is Garrett, and this is part two of my Tinkercad tutorial series. If you haven't seen part one, um, I will put a link down in the description where you can click the I up in the corner um, and check that out first. In that video, we kind of just laid out the basics of Tinkercad, got some objects out there, grouped them, and just basically enough that you could mess around with. In this video, we're gonna be moving on to some of the more advanced features. Um, and I say advanced, they're still pretty simple, Tinkercad. Um, tries to keep everything pretty simple so so let's just jump into it um, I've got my tutorial uh, project open but you can just open up a new project we don't need anything specific for this uh, I just have a box out here first of all I don't think I touched on this in the first video but this cube up here it's pretty self-explanatory if I hover over it like if I just want a top-down view I can click on top here and it will rotate the camera to that view I can click on these little arrows on the side to go to front I can go to bottom and then you can just click and rotate for a free rotate or you can right click out here for pretty much the same effect but if you ever want to be looking directly at the front or top you can just click over here and get that view now you may notice that it looks a little weird um, and that is because we have something called perspective on and that's how our eyes work in the real 3d world is because we have two eyes so we can judge distance and um, generally when I'm modeling things, I want to leave that on um, just because that's how things look in the real world and when you print your object, this is how it's gonna look. But there are specific occasions like when things are geometric that you need to kind of see them flat. And Tinkercad has a solution for this. It's this little button clear at the bottom down here. It's, it's actually called switch to flat view or orthographic. And if I click that, you'll see that it goes directly to the side. I can still rotate the camera around, but you'll notice that things look weird. Now the um, edges of this seem to bow outward, and that is just because it is removing all perspective. Um, a specific case where you'd want this, like if I go to the top view and say I had several more boxes out here and I wanted to make sure that they all had a the same amount of space between them, like I just want one of these units of space, an easy way to see that is just by being in orthographic view, because if I switch back, you can see that, especially as they move to the side of the camera, it gets harder and harder to tell if they're all even. Another thing, if we have a bunch of objects out here and we want to work on one specifically, we can hide the others. So there's this little light bulb if I have them selected, and I can click that light bulb and they will disappear. And if I want them to come back, there's a light bulb up here, I can click that and it will just bring back everything we have hidden. I'm gonna go ahead and delete those for right this second. Next up we have a ruler, and this is in the top right above all of your shapes. You can click that ruler, drag it out onto the grid, and if you click it, uh, you'll see that little lines pop up. And it doesn't do much for you right this second, but if you select an object and it's within these um, grid lines, it will basically give you some measurements, um, not only of the object itself, but where it is placed along this grid. So you can just get some more mathematically precise uh, placements using this. And if you don't want it there, you can just click the little X and it goes away. Another handy tool is right next to it called the work plane. Um, you can hit W on the keyboard or just click this button here. And it basically just allows you to place a new work plane. Um, and so if I click on the top here, you will notice that when I drag out a new object, it will be on top of that box because that's where we have the work plane. And if I wanna reset that, all I have to do is hit W or click that button again and then hover out over this little floor and it will go back to where it was. Um, this is really handy because I can also do it on the front of this object here. So if I wanted a cylinder placed here, I can do that. They're just basically some tools to make your life easier, is all those are. But this work plane one is an often forgotten one and can save you a bunch of time and headache rather than dragging things out and moving them up to where you want them to be. So just remember that you have it at your disposal. And we also have some grid settings down here in the bottom right, just to the left of all of your shapes. You can click edit grid. If you have a specific printer in mind, you can set the dimensions of that printer so you know that whatever you're modeling will fit that specifically. Uh, if you wanna switch to inches, you can totally do that. And then this snap grid down here basically uh, tells Tinkercad what units to increment when you move around. So right now I have it set to one millimeter. So no matter what I do and move these around, it will always be in increments of one millimeter. And that includes scaling an object, so I can just click this little drop down and change it. So if I go to five millimeters, 
I won't get as precise control. You can see it snaps to a much uh, bigger area there. Or I can go down to 0.1 millimeter and get extremely fine control. There is another shape that I wanted to call out quickly because most of these are pretty self-explanatory. Like even the text one um, is pretty, you, you can click on it and kind of figure out what you're gonna do with it. Um, so not too hard to figure out. And even this one's pretty easy, but it is useful, so I wanted to show it to you. The scribble, I can drag it out here and it basically changes the view and allows me to draw. And so I'm just gonna draw some stuff here and see what happens and it basically just creates um, a path around what I drew and turns that into a 3D object. And there are some different options down here that you can mess with, um, but when you are done, you can click this done in the bottom right, it'll go back to the 3D view, and now this is just a normal object. You can always go back and edit it, and you can change the height. So that's good, and it can be merged with other objects. So say that I drew something and I wanted to subtract it out of this cube, I could turn it into a hole, group them, and now I have that shape cut out of the cube. Obviously requires a bit of an artistic touch, but um, good to know nonetheless. So that's pretty much it for the basics of Tinkercad and specifically making 3D models uh, for 3D printing. I know Tinkercad has quite a few other features, like there's some Minecraft features. I believe there's some circuit board stuff. I'm not gonna touch any of that here. Also, don't forget that you have other shapes at your disposal. If you click this, um, just mess with some of those other things. There are some uh, pretty cool things in here. Specifically in the shape generators, there's a lot of cool stuff, so um, feel free to mess around. But one final thing that I did wanna go over before I end this video is the import and export. Export is pretty simple, we'll touch on that in a second, but the import is really where Tinkercad um, comes in super handy for me. So if I click this import button up here in the top right, I, you can see that I can add a file here and it supports STLs, OBJs, and SVGs. Now these first two are 3D object files. Um, pretty much any 3D software nowadays can create these. Um, but just be warned that uh, size does matter. So if you try to bring in a very, very large file, it's gonna have a really, really hard time. Probably won't work on you. So keep the files small, keep the polygon count small, and you should be relatively okay with this one. And the SVG is also very powerful. It is a 2D vector file that can be converted into a 3D object. We can actually convert images into 3D objects. But I will get into that in a future video. So for now, I'm just going to bring in a 3D object. I've actually got an STL of a Kirby that I made a really long time ago. So I'm going to bring that in, leave the scale at 100%. Um, feel free to me mess with this however you want. This is basically just telling you what size it will be. When it gets in there, you can change it later. So I'm going to hit import and it's going to take a, a little bit to bring in because Kirby's not a super small file, but it's not super big either. Okay, that took a minute or two to bring in, um, and it even made it pink for us. How um, fitting. Uh, so you can see that the model looks like it has a couple defects here and there. Um, those don't really show up in a print of this, so I wouldn't worry about those too much right now. It's just likely weird shading artifacts on the, uh, the model itself. But it kind of converts it into um, whatever Tinkercad uses for its meshes. So now I can add and remove objects to this. Um, and obviously you can get as crazy as you want, but um, if you look at the front view, you can tell that uh, this would not print very well. Just because they're round and bulbous -y, and in order to print, I need to cut this off. I already have a version of Kirby that has the bottom cut off, but I'm just using this as an example. Um, to show you guys. So what I would do if I wanted to flatten the bottom is I would just take this box and I'm just gonna start moving it out to cover up all of Kirby. And just the underneath, I just basically want it to, Kirby to sit completely within this little box. And that's actually pretty good. I might wanna cut off a little less, so I'm gonna go down. That seems like a good amount. So while I've got the box selected, I'm gonna click on the hole and then I can select both of them and group. This will also take a second just because I am working with such a, a bigger model than all of these other shapes, 
But now you can see that I have a perfectly flat surface for Kirby to print on. But there's some space here, so I can go ahead and just hit the D key and it will drop the model down to the work plane. Now, if we wanna export this, I can click on it, click export over here on the top right. And then you can either export everything or you can export just what you have selected. So just be aware of what you're doing there um, and then choose your file format. And that's really all you need to do. From there, you can take that file that gets downloaded into your slicer and it's ready to 3D print. I know learning to 3D model can be kind of frustrating, but it is really, really cool the first time you can model something and then print it out on your 3D printer because that's something that you created, even if it's very simple. So I recommend even just making a tiny little box or something that um, you can call your own and then printing it out because it's, it's a really cool feeling. But I'm gonna leave this video at that. I've given you um, quite a few more things to, to mess with and learn about. So like I said with the last one, just go in and mess around. Um, you really can't break anything too bad. So don't be afraid to just mess with things here in Tinkercad. Then in the next video, we are actually gonna be creating a little box. And I'm gonna show you how to um, not only subtract things, um, but make intersecting parts so we can have a box that kind of slots together and make sure that it's the right size to put what we want in it. So thank you guys for watching and until next time, keep creating.